Jacinta is now a bit more conscious of not being able to maintain a conversation and is reliant on me to pick up the pieces. Jacinta is 68 now, so would have been 64 at that time and would have been young getting dementia. It was a bit of a disappointment to us all, and more importantly to Jacinta. I feel for Jacinta because she shouldn't be in that position. When we met Professor Mulcahy, part of her interview with Jacinta was to get a memory test 12 months later. A similar type of recall was done. We were pleasantly surprised that Jacinta's score the second time around was higher than in the first one. We gave people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease nutritional supplements that included three compounds called mesozeaxanthine, zeaxanthine and lutein. And we gave these in combination with fish oils or omegas. People who were on the combination of those three compounds plus fish oils were able to manage their everyday activities better. These are nutritional compounds that are out there in everyday foodstuffs and fish oils that are present in fish. So we're talking about um, a nutritional formulation that has no side effects and that's really important. Even in a typical healthy diet, we are certainly not consuming enough of these particular carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin and mesozeaxanthin. We know that when consumed in supplement form, the patients respond very well to those supplements and now we know that they get functional benefits in terms of visual improvement and in some cases cognitive improvement. Alzheimer's disease is a huge crisis at the moment. For instance, in the United Kingdom, over half a million people suffer from the disease. The trial on Alzheimer's disease is extremely significant and the most important medical advance, in my opinion, of this century. Anybody who wants to safeguard their brain health should take the supplement. It led us to believe that whatever we were on was working, and we don't know where it would be if this supplement wasn't available. So um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's very nice to meet you this morning to present to you the scientific paper just published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. My name is John Nolan. I'm a biochemist. I'm a professor of science and human nutrition research in Waterford, Ireland. Today I'm going to present to you over the next 20 minutes or so the background to the research paper um, leading through to the main outcomes and in particular interpretations from the findings of the clinical paper. The work that we've been conducting has been related to the role of nutrition for Alzheimer's disease. So first of all, it's important that we discuss Alzheimer's disease a little bit and the problems essentially that Alzheimer's disease presents. We know that Alzheimer's disease is an extremely ag aggressive disease and it, it progresses very quickly once the disease is diagnosed. The patients with this condition experience vast difficulties with day-to-day -day functioning and activities of quality of life. And we see the patient being affected in terms of their memory, mood, and many other facets of, of function. We know that Alzheimer's disease is the fourth leading, leading cause of death, that 5% of people at the age of 65 have this, and it progresses very fast beyond this, to the point that over the age of 80 years of age, 45% of people have some form of dementia, Alzheimer's disease being the most common type, of course. And we know from our statistics that this condition is going to continue to develop because of the growing world population and, of course, because of the aging population. We know for the United Kingdom that, as Dr. Howard has said, there's over half a million people with it. And the cost of this per patient per annum is in the region of £40,000. Comparing that to a healthy age match control of about um, 10,000 to, to support someone of that age. So there's a, there's a real, not only is there a cost to the patient here, there's a real and true financial cost to, to healthcare systems. The background to our research relates to the study of nutrition for human function and human health. And for many years we've all been listening to the potential importance of diets such as the Mediterranean diet. Because of science and technology, and our ability to measure nutrition now, we've been able to identify key components within the Mediterranean diet that we feel 
are essential to enhance um, brain health, brain function, and in this case, the implications for Alzheimer's. So essentially, we've been able to target the nutritional pieces of the Mediterranean diet that are relevant to the brain and that have a function within the brain. The main area of study from the nutrition that we have been looking at for nearly 20 years now relates to nutrients called carotenoids. Carotenoids are plant pigments found in nature. There are over 700 carotenoids in nature. They're not vitamins, they're not minerals, they're plant pigments. When you look at fruits and vegetables and when you look at the colours that you see in those plants, they are because of these carotenoids. Remarkably, in a typical diet, we consume about 50 of these. 14 of them are in our blood system, which we refer to as our taxi system for the, for the body. And when you get to the brain and the eye, that's focused down to three of these carotenoids in, in, in the human brain. And these have now also been confirmed um, from the retina to the brain. Omega-3 fatty acid is also key to, to this uh, research discovery because it is, in fact, the combination of the omega-3 fatty acids and the carotenoids that we believe to be given value to, to brain nutrition. Um, and this is important to, to point out at this stage. The earlier work that we've done has been, as I said, with the human retina, with the back of the eye. And this yellow pigment that you see here relates to the carotenoids in the back of the eye. There's three of these 700 carotenoids which the body selects to put in this tissue. Now remember that the retina is in, in fact part of the brain. It's the seeing part of the brain. So it's lutein zeaxanthin and mesozeaxanthin, which is a key component of the macular pigment, located in this central tissue that gives us sensation of sight. So this is very, very important indeed. Research has shown us that not only are these pigments, as I said, present in the human retina, that they're also present in high concentrations in the brain. And moreover, the amount of these nutritional pigments that you have in the retina correlates directly with the amount in the brain. So in other words, patients that have a low pigment in their eye, that will be reflected with low carotenoid pigment in, in the brain as well. And the really good news here for science and technology is that we can now actually measure these nutritional pigments in the living person because of our access to the retina via these optical techniques which we use. So we can measure this nutritional pigment, which is a biomarker of brain health. One of the problems that we face, of course, in today's society is it relates to nutrition itself and the quality of nutrition that is available. And these particular nutrient um, components, and I'll explain their functions in the common slide, um, are becoming more and more deficient in even so-called healthy foods. So when we eat our fruits and our vegetables, that, which is what we endeavour to do every day, what I'm saying here is that even those foods now are becoming deficient in these very important nutrients. So in other words, we are not getting enough of these nutrients even from a standard healthy diet. And here you can see, for example, later on in this presentation, I will present to you the, the clinical trial where we used a particular supplement. Here you can see an example of the amount of um, food you would have to eat, fish and, 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 and vegetables, to get one daily dose. So this is not achievable with normal standard diet and you could certainly not comply to this type of diet. I certainly wouldn't want to e either. So using appropriate um, sources such as the marigold petal, which is an extremely good and a pure source of, of these nutritional compounds, um, technology has been able to extract these nutrients and put them into a supplement form for use um, for human function. Also, uh, the source of the omega-3 fatty acids, which are the other component of this, is the primary source of this is from a natural fish. Um, again, our consumption of fish over the last number of years has been something that uh, has been more difficult to obtain, pure, healthy, um, uh, not farm fish, essentially, because the farm fish doesn't have the same quality omega-3 that we will get. So we have been able to look at various different food supplements that have been able to formulate these key nutrients, as I said, which are now part of the brain, and we're now able to deliver those in a very focused and a very bio-efficient uh, bio way uh, for, for human function. So the functions of these, of these pigments for the tissues of interest, the retina, and in this case, the brain, the first thing we need to remind ourselves about are the antioxidant properties of these pigments. The carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin, when combined, deliver a really powerful and potent antioxidant capacity to these tissues. We know that this is extremely important for the human brain because the brain is very vulnerable to oxidative damage. Oxidative damage, as we know, um, is the result of free radical attack on the stable cells in those tissues. And oxidative stress itself is a key 
factor in the development of Alzheimer's disease and, e and indeed in the development of these unwanted proteins associated with Alzheimer's disease. So in other words, these nutrients can function as like a sunscreen for these tissues inside the body and this is very important indeed. We also know that these pigments have really powerful anti-inflammatory properties and again inflammation and the brain and the role of inflammation in, um, with disease such as Alzheimer's disease is what has been well established and well understood. So we now have a potential to put nutrition in the parts of the brain that are vulnerable to oxidative stress and inflammation in a way that we can in real time um, protect against those uh, diseases. Over the last 18 years, the Nutrition Research Centre Ireland in Waterford Institute of Technology has published nearly 100 papers on, on this type of nutrition and how it relates to human health, human function and the brain. Um, our earlier work, of course, was focused on, on the retina and macular degeneration. There has been, over the last number of years, some very important key findings within our field internationally with respect to the nutrition I've just been speaking about and brain health and function. As already explained, a paper in 2004 has shown us that, the amount, that these pigments are present in high concentrations in the brain. And indeed, omega-3 fatty acids itself, DHA, the DHA component of that, forms nearly 8% of total brain volume. When we look at our own work in 2014, we were the first to show that patients with Alzheimer's disease are truly deficient in these nutritional pigments. And we were able to do this because at, at that stage we were able to measure these nutritional pigments. So an, an identification that patients are deficient in this was a key part of this scientific discovery. Earlier this year we've even been able to show in the healthy population that supplementation with these key nutrients has been able to enhance memory and cognitive abilities. Again, over, in, in real time, over an 18 month period. But the paper that I'm here to speak about today is, has just been published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and this has been on the back of our access to working with patients with Alzheimer's disease and using the technologies and using the formulations to see the impact on quality of life and functional outcomes in patients with Alzheimer's disease. The study, as I said, has just been published and you're the first now to see this. The objective of the study was to investigate the impact of supplemental xanthophyll carotenoids plus omega-3 fatty acids on blood biochemical response. So in other words, when we give these nutrients and we compare carotenoid only to the carotenoid plus the omega, was there a difference in terms of how the patients respond in their blood system? Remember, we refer to this as their taxi system. Because efficiency of delivery of these nutrients is a key part of this um, opportunity, essentially. And working with University Hospital Watford, we were able to work with patients with Alzheimer's disease in the mild to moderate advance, mild to moderate stage of this condition, who had never been on this type of supplement intervention before. So although the sample presented here represents a relatively small sample in terms of the research question, it's a very pure sample in terms of us being able to ask and answer the research question. The methodologies that we've used, um, which were led from this, is the headquarters in Waterford. We work with a multidisciplinary team of research scientists with expertise in nutrition, um, brain, cognitive health, cognitive function, uh, human health, biochemistry, and it was all of this expertise collectively that was a allowed us to conduct this experiment um, on these patients. As I said, this was conducted at the Nutrition Research Centre Ireland in collaboration with University Hospital Waterford. Primarily, there were three groups that we were interested in looking at in this clinical trial. Patients for trial one and trial two were recruited from the age-related care unit from University Hospital Waterford. Patients for trial, T, for trial three were a control group and they were recruited from the local area. And all of these trial protocols were reviewed in total by appropriate ethics committees and full ethical approval was granted prior to commencing the trial. As I said, one of the key outcomes for this was looking at the blood, the biochemical response. And we developed methodology in our own centre to allow us to look at the particular and the targeted nutritional uh, components that we were so interested in studying for human function with, in these patients. Here you can see a sample of what normally happens in a blood. And these small peaks that you see here essentially represent normal carotenoid in these patients. And as you can see, essentially, these peaks are very, very low. When you give the supplement, you can get this type of response to the carotenoids of interest. So this confirms, in fact, the deficiency of these nutrients, 
that are, that are present within general society and indeed within um, the, the aging population, such as those with Alzheimer's disease that we were studying. But the good news is that our HPLC, our high performance liquid chromatography analysis, showed us that um, patients were responding really well to this. And then the next question was to understand at what level and what does this mean for clinical function. As I've technology has allowed us now to measure nutrition in real time and even in patients with Alzheimer's disease. So now we can essentially look at the retina, measure nutrition of the retina and make representation of what's going on in the human brain from those real time measurements. So this has been a, a, a wonderful um, development with, it, with technology and indeed for our clinical trials. Hence the novelty of what we're doing. The other objective of this trial was to work with normal clinical practice. So working with the doctors of Alzheimer's disease, we had to follow normal clinical pra practice in terms of assessing them. And as I presented at the beginning of this talk, you know, with Alzheimer's disease, it's much more than just uh, memory or cognitive decline. It's that quality of life piece. Can we do something for patients to give them a quality of life even with the disease and potentially protect the disease and retain quality of life? That's the essential thing. Patients with Alzheimer's disease progress very quickly, as I've pointed out. And also you can see issues beyond memory, such as mood, uh, aggression, and a very, very difficult and sad disease in, in, in truth. Trial one was performed on patients with Alzheimer's disease over an 18 month pe period. Um, you can see here the definition is essentially mild to moderate. We did blood carotenoid analysis, we call these the Santafel carotenoids, and clinical assessment was also performed at baseline and at 18 months upon exiting the trial. The first group were given the carotenoid only intervention. These are the lutein, the zeaxanthin, and the mesozeaxanthin. The second group, um, we did the very same measurements within the blood, and at, after 18 months, we also in this group looked at the DHA and EPA profile. This is the, the main components of the omega-3 fatty acids that we were interested in. And we wanted to see if that had any different effect in terms of the delivery of these um, important uh, pigments to the eye and the brain. And then in a, a third group of age controls, age match controls, we wanted to look at the carotenoid only um, intervention for that group. The results are presented here. This somewhat busy slide shows you that for trials one and trials two, the patients with Alzheimer's disease, we were comparing like with like. So they had a very similar stage of disease, they had a very dim, similar dietary uh, profile and, and measurements within their eye as well. So they were comparable, and this is important for a clinical trial to be comparing like with like. Of course, when you look at the age match control group, while they were similar with age, they differed in many other um, factors, such as their dietary and their carotenoid uh, profile measurements that we performed. And here are the main results. The, in trial one, when we gave carotenoids only, you can see here we did get a response in these particular nutrients that were important. That response in the green line correlated to the, to the control group, so they did similar. And this is important because we know that patients can respond. So the reason for having low pigment at the beginning is primarily true to the fact that they're not eating any of these um, vegetables and fruits that are very important, these components of the Mediterranean diet. But the real surprising outcome here, and I suppose the main part of this discovery, has been that when you provide the carotenoids in the presence of the fish oil, we get a statistically significant and much more meaningful response. So essentially we've identified a way to deliver these nutrients at a, at a superior rate and magnitude than we could previously have achieved. So the, here you can see serum lutein, which is one of the main components of these pigments. When you look at mesozeaxanthin, you can see a very similar trend. Again, the group that were given, the fish oil plus the carotenoids, exhibited a much more meaningful response. And every patient that were on that combination formulation um, exhibited a similar type of response. So it wasn't just one trial that did very well, it was an absolute trend throughout those patients. So when we saw this scientifically and statistically, we were very excited by these findings. And this particular uh, formulation had uh, omega-3 and a high DHE component, and we can see here that the purity of that, we got a very good response in that um, measure as well. In terms of the clinical outcome, you see here a, a very busy slide once again, but, but important on the list, because this shows us the results from trial one. This was the carotenoid only group. And what you can see here is very little of normal progression of Alzheimer's disease. Insof insofar as the patients on this arm of the trial 
progressed in a very comparable way to they normally would with the disease, to the point that unfortunately they become very ill, very sick, and in many cases here, even unable to consume the supplement by the end of the trial. So the deterioration with, associated with disease is very clear and very rapid. And you can see this graphically presented here. Here's the baseline data. And by the time we move to 18 months, you can see the, the big shift in terms of to that clinically functional advanced stage. So these patients become very unwell, essentially, okay, and in, not able to participate even further in the trial. When we looked at trial two, we can see a very different outcome. And again, to point out that this wasn't just one patient within this trial that had a good finding, because that, that can happen in medicine. But when we saw that the positive outcomes that we were assessing clinically with respect to their clinical functional outcomes um, across the board here looked very, very, very promising indeed. And you can see this graphically presented here, that in fact there was a shift in the positive direction in terms of those clinical functional outcomes, whereby patients even in, in the middle stage of the condition would have moved to um, a much more earlier stage in terms of their functional outcomes, their clinical functional outcomes. So the clinical research nurses, which were totally independent to the formulations used, so they, had no, this was, they were blinded to that, they did not know what formulation group those patients were on, um, these are the reports that, that, that came back from. So the results demonstrate an increase observed in the Santival carotenoids that were significantly greater for formulation 2 compared to formulation 1. The progression of Alzheimer's disease appeared to be less for this group who were supplemented with this unique combination. And this was statistically diff different between the groups. The primary functional outcomes and the buzzwords from, from this clinical work are that we demonstrated improvements in some aspects of memory, sight, and particularly mood uh, um, within these patients, which I cannot emphasize enough the importance of retaining that quality of life in those patients. The findings were unexpected. This initially was a biochemical experiment to look at how delivering these compounds in the presence and absence of fish oil may have affected the delivery. Um, to see the clinical outcomes that we got was really, truly fascinating. Um, and the, the differences that we saw here in terms of those clinical functional benefits were absolutely linked to the arm, to the intervention arm of the trial. Again, with the combination arm demonstrating um, the improvements way beyond. Way beyond. The improved delivery of these important brain nutrients to the target tissue is likely to have contributed to the positive outcomes linked to this formulation. And this is due to enhanced absorption and distribution of the carotenoids. This is a preliminary report, but it suggests positive outcomes for these patients um, who consume this combination over an 18-month period. We believe that the results of this study should now guide today focused nutritional intervention strategy for patients with AAD with Alzheimer's disease. But we also acknowledge the, the limitations of this trial in terms of sample size. And for that reason, uh, a much larger trial is now currently underway at our research center. And we hope in the future to extend this to other centers uh, across the world, funding dependent, of course. I'd like to acknowledge the team of researchers, not just the people on this slide who contributed directly to this research question, but the national team of research that have been working on nutrition and focused nutrition for eye and brain health over the last 20 years. It has been the sum of the parts here and all the, 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 the discoveries for the last 15 years, including our ability to even measure these pigments. But now I, I feel that we've identified the nutrients that are key to brain health, brain function. And given the burden that Alzheimer's disease presents to the patient fundamentally, their family, their carers, their loved one, and to the healthcare um, systems that try to support these patients, we have to now be proactive using this safe nutrition to deliver these targeted um, components to the brain that I, that I believe um, will play a major role in reducing the burden of Alzheimer's disease as we move into the next, de next decades. And this is something that we have to do. So I would like to thank you for your time, for listening to this brief presentation, and I would be delighted at this stage to answer any questions that you may have on the research study and indeed the research hypothesis. Thank you. It's happening in the brain that means that this needs to be protected. <coughs> Very important to understand. When we look at 
what the doctors say to patients is oxidative damage is the cost of doing business with life essentially. In other words, we all need to use and metabolize oxygen to function, to stay alive. And these cells in our retina and in our brain metabolize more oxygen than any other tissues in the body. Inherent in that is that we have a natural antioxidant defense mechanism that can protect against oxidative damage. Because oxidative stress is essentially the production of unstable molecules from the use of oxygen that are unstable because they're missing an electron. So what those unstable radicals do is they attack the cells such as the cells in the brain that have electrons and they make those cells unstable. We call this a cascade of reaction presents. So if we become deficient in our antioxidant defense mechanism and particularly for the brain which has an abundance of oxy oxygen use and an abundance of polyunsaturated fatty acids which primarily can be the substrate for, for attack of these unstable molecules, we, you can get a a trigger that essentially causes cell destruction, cell death. And we know that oxidative stress itself has been linked with the development of the unwanted proteins that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. So there's an absolute biologically plausible rationale that oxidative stress is a problem for tissue damage in the brain. So it leads to the proteins that you see in the brain yeah, building up? Potentially, and, and you know, the, other functions, the other functions are important to understand here as well in addition to the oxidative stress. We have to look at the potential role of what these carotenoid molecules are doing in the brain. And a lot of this science ha is, is absolutely underway in terms of their structural role that they play. So in the brain it's like an electrical circuit and you have what we call gap junctions. And this is where the synapses meet and electrical messages are transmitted. The carotenoids are stored in those locations. They exhibit their antioxidant potential there, but they also are believed to play a role in, in gap junction facilitation. So the connectivity of the brain. So they play, they play a structural role here as well. And we believe that they may even be involved in the activation and deactivation of key enzymes that are linked to the development of diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. They do this fundamentally, these same nutrients in, in, in plants. They play a major role in, in photosynthesis and, and, and managing light and oxygen in, in plants. And it's just the same for the humans. The problem we have is nutrition deficiency. No one in this room has enough of these particular nutrients. Nature wants us to have enough of these nutrients. When you look at breast milk, for example, and you look at the nutritional components of breast milk, the primary nutrients in, 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 in the reason why clostrum is yellow, that very early stage of breast milk, is because of these nutrients. So these nutrients live throughout our body. They're fat soluble. The brain is a very fatty tissue. It makes absolute sense to that these particular nutrients are going to and do exhibit a key role in the human brain. The problem is, to be frank, we're all living way too long. Now, this is something that we should be delighted about, but it's only successful and something we should be pleased about if we can re retain our function into those later years. So we need an absolute shift in what we do here with nutrition. We need a lot of food for the populations that we have. But farming itself causes a depletion in these particular nutrients. Because every time we farm a plant, we make it easy for that plant to grow. What happens to those plants is they underproduce these particular nutrients. So th this is a very important discussion to have in terms of nutrition. Moving to the extreme and moving to Alzheimer's and looking at oxidative stress in the brain, you know, it's absolutely clear to me that enhancing good antioxidants in the brain is going to f be very important for Alzheimer's disease. What this paper has shown is that we've stumbled on a way here to get these key nutrients to the brain and it is this is via the unique combination of the carotenoids plus the fish oil. We were working with nutrition in that study. At that time, we were able to measure the pigment in those uh, volunteers for that trial. We also were able to perform a battery of tests around cognitive function, so looking at memory, attention, um, and so on, all these functions of the brain. And remarkably, what we discovered in that trial is that the participants that had a very high macular pigment, this is what we call the three carotenoids when they're present in the retina. So those individuals that had very high pigment outperformed individuals with low pigment. So if you scored high, you did very well in cognitive function. So this was a key observational discovery in a very large sample of over 5,000 people. And, and also when we look at the healthy population, 
studies from our, from our centre, double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trials have shown in the healthy population that when you enrich these particular carotenoids, even in the healthy population, over a 12-month period you can have a direct impact on cognitive abilities, even in that population. So we can see that you know, there's absolute impact of getting these nutrients to the target tissue and the brain. It's great that we can measure these pigments in the eye because this is the window to the brain and we've known this for a long time. The eye being the seeing part of the brain, so it's, it's, it's representative of the central nervous system, this tissue. So we, the fact that we can work with this in the living patient has been key to these discoveries. Any more questions? No. I, I'd like to make a comment that in fact, uh, not only is the um, consumption of this particular product uh, helpful medically, but also economically, because as uh, Dr. Nolan said, the uh, cost of this to the National Health Service is about uh, 4,000 a year, and a total of half a million. Uh, much of that could be saved if we didn't get Alzheimer's disease. And I think in the future, um, <clears throat> The, the authorities will find that there will there, there be a tremendous benefit and less money to need it for the National Health Service. And it's important to point out as well on the back of that, that we're not saying, what I believe is that, you know, we, we must still continue to look for treatments and cures for Alzheimer's disease with respect to the, the advanced stages of, of that disease. And of course we haven't achieved anything major in, in that regard to this point. What, we're, what we've been able to achieve here with nutrition and appropriate targeted nutrition is complementary to any medical discoveries in that, in that area. So early prevention is, is, is going to be key to, to impacting on this disease. Even over the, the course of a trial, if, you know, to get people to conform to particular diets is just truly not, not possible. This is a very easy way to get this safe and, and, and concentrated nutrition relevant to the brain that we've shown to have an impact to, to, to the appropriate patients. And I take it every day, I take, I take this combination every day because I think it has to extend beyond that of, of Alzheimer's disease. It's, 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 it's important for general brain health as well and, and cognitive abilities. So, is it freely available now? Is, is the supplement available? Yes. My understanding is that the particular supplement that has been used in the trial has been manufactured and, and it's available, yes. Yeah, on the web? Yes. So if it's called um, memory, health. memory health. A lot of the work that we have done has been to understand, and John is right, the regulation around food supplements is, is, is quite poor. And that's why I think when doctors are making recommendations, and we see this now within the eye, within the ophthalmology and how they do that, there's ma massive differences between so some of the supplements that you can get on the high street and in the stores. So it's important that people understand when they're making a recommendation or if, the, if people want to go and get a particular supplement, that they do so on the back that these nutrients have been tested for stability, um, which is key. And we've published several papers looking at the stability of commercially available nutritional supplements. And, you know, unless they're formulated properly, such as what we've used, been able to use in this trial, um, they're going to deteriorate very quickly. And so in some cases, some of the supplements we looked at had zero activity. So it's, it's, I can't overemphasize the importance of having the supplement that's been tested for the stability and for the efficacy and for safety, and that's something else to say. You know, the new, this is a very focused nutritional intervention. It's not like some of the interventions you see out there that have 25 different nutritional molecules all competing with each other within the formulation. This is, this is built on the back of scientific papers for many, many years now, what nutrients are in the brain. How can they be sourced? How can we get them into a formula where we have enough? And then how can they be used to be delivered to the systems in the body? And essentially that's what we've shown here. We've, we've discovered how to get these nutrients to the <laughs> relevant target tissues. But appro the appropriate supplement um, is, is going to be key here and not just any supplement on, on, the, on the high street. The uh, patients in this trial, were they all from Ireland, the UK? They were all from the southeast region of the Republic of Ireland. I, I work with a, a, a professor of, of medicine in University Hospital Water, Professor Rena Mulcahy, who's in charge of the age-related care unit. So she's been working with us now for many, many years, and the patients primarily came from her uh, memory clinics and her associated doctor memory clinics in the region. Uh, what, we're, what we're in the process of doing now 
is to really scale this trial up and the Howard Foundation have, have continued to invest in the scientific experiments in Waterford and these clinical trials. So we've actually started a whole new programme uh, called the Remind trial, um, which, which is underway. Um, we've already obtained ethical approval for that trial. We hope at, at initial stage to um, recruit over 120 patients into that trial. It will be a placebo control trial of this particular formulation for, versus a, a placebo with, with no active carotenoid ingredients in, in, in that. So and we understand that we need to do this. We need to scale this up. We need to have um, larger numbers. And, and really the hope for the future goes beyond that. You know, the investment in Alzheimer's disease to date and the research both in the UK and Ireland has been very much focused towards a, um, you know, fixing it today you know with, with some type of medication and I understand why we need to invest in, in, in that and those elements of research but really all the evidence is saying that we must do more with preventative strategy and when you look at the diseases like Alzheimer's disease what we know absolutely are there are some factors we can change and there are some factors we cannot change we call these modifiable and non-modifiable <coughs> we must emphasize on the modifiable factors and, 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 and nutrition is a key modifiable factor. Science has taken us beyond that now and not just saying generically let's have the Mediterranean diet. What is it about the Mediterranean diet and what key components of the Mediterranean diet are likely based on a scientific rationale to impact on the brain and that's so we've, we, we've followed our nose in that regard. We've used the science from our own centre and that across the world to really understand nutrition because nutritional interventional trials up to this point have been um, really on a not successful. And, and for me this is, is, is a change in that. This has shown that when you get the right nutrients and when you formulate it in a way that you can get them delivered to the target tissue, you can have an impact. You know, so, so no pun intended, but for me this is a no-brainer for implementation. It needs to, it needs to be done. Um, Alex, did you find much of a difference between the effects in your female and male patients? It's a very good question because we, we know with carotenoids particularly, um, you, females can respond differently to males. Um, in this sample, remembering that it's a relatively small sample, there was no statistical difference um, in, in the outcomes, but your question is a very good one and one that will need to be addressed in the larger trial, and we've actually taken that very much into regard. Um, you know, in terms of the, the patients that, that we've seen. So we haven't had the power in this study to address that important question. 